We have, we have Paul Kaiser with us here. He is an innovative business leader and HR professional. He is the CEO and founder of Engage Consulting and the, and the co-founder of a successful technology startup, The Talent Games, whose vision is to transform HR by digitizing the talent process. He has a strong track record in transforming businesses towards progressive growth paths. Let's hear his views about the employee training and skill, complex problem solving, and digital fluency. Please welcome Mr. Kaiser. Good morning. Well, well afternoon already. My name is Paul Kaiser. Um, I've been, I'm a CEO of Engage Consulting and of the Talent Games. And I've been living in Pakistan since, uh, since 2003. Uh, and to be honest, every time that I see a story like Mustafa, I get humbled. And all the stuff that I'm doing actually vanishes in thin air. Uh, but still, my presentation is 15 minutes. His, his was 30 seconds. So I think his one was much more important. Thank you very much, guys. What I'm going to talk about is we talk about four, uh, the, the fourth industrial re revolution. We talk about disruption, tra transformation. What I would like to talk about is how do you manage your people in that, in that time? And that's specifically around managing talent in what I call the exponential age. I think we have to do the hand messages. So there are three exponential forces. A lot of stuff, oh, a lot of stuff is around that we talked about is the technology. But two other hurricanes or tornadoes are happening at the same time. One is around the environment. And the second one is about the ability that we connect in the world. Next one, please. Um, I had the, the pleasure of going to a, a executive of Singularity University, where this gentleman, Peter Diamandis, is the co-founder. And he says the forces that are driving innovation are accelerating and compounding. And it took me a long, long time for me to understand that. What does that mean? Can I have the next slide, please? Because we're very good in what I call linear thinking. If I ask anybody of you to take 30 steps, where do you think I will end up? Probably at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the hall? Yeah, probably at the end of the hall. Now I'm going to ask you a, a slightly different question. If I would ask you to take 30 exponential steps, in which basically I double every time the number of steps that I take, where do you think I will end up? Anybody? Huh? The C, well, slightly further than that. Because if you add up 2, 4, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1028, 2000, etc., etc. If you do that 30 times, can I have the next two slides, please? You end up next, you end up 25 times around the world. You end up 25 times around the world. And that is what Mr. Diamandis is talking about. That is what Mr. Moore, the inventor of the, 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 the chips, was talking about when he talked about Moore's law, in which every 18 months, the speed as well, the performance as well as the cost of a, of a computer chip actually doubles and halves. Can I have the next slide? Because if you, if you accelerate Moore's law on this graph, and this is a logarithm, logarithm graph in terms of calculations per second for $1,000. So that's basically the computing power that you can buy for $1,000. So in, 20, in around 2023 uh, 20, or 2020, 2005, 6, the computer power that you could that you're able to buy for $1,000 was the similar amount of computing power that an insect's brain would be able to do. By 2023, they by 2015, they actually ex anticipate that we uh, achieved that we can now have computing power in our pockets, where's my phone, equivalent of the brain of a mouse. By 2023, they anticipate that the computing power that you and I can buy for $1,000 will be similar to a human brain. And if you take that exponential step forward, they anticipate that by 2048, 
the computing power that you can buy for thousand dollars will be similar to the whole human race. If that happens, nothing is going to be, uh, is going to be unresolved. Yeah? Nobody was anticipating that this little thing would be at the same power as all the Pentagon computers in the 90s. And this is what you and I now have in our, in our pockets. So over time, the ability of problems that are currently unsolvable will be solved. And Dr. Attar Rahman this morning already mentioned some of these problems that were, can, can go and be resolved. Next slide, please. The other one is, of course, the acceleration in, in the environment. And 2014 was the highest temperature in the world ever. 2015, again. 2016, again. And it looks like 2017 is again going to beat the highest temperature ever measured in the world uh, in 2017. And you and I are going to say, well, what does it matter? Let's put a full more coal-powered coal power plants in Pakistan because we only use 5% of, uh, of our CO2 emission. But you tell that to the, uh, to the population of the Maldives, who in the next five or six years are going to be underwater. So environment is a real big problem that we need to resolve. Everybody anticipates that with the computing power and the smartness that we have, we will resolve it. But it does will take a significant effort. The third change that you've seen over the last couple of years is in terms of interconnectivity. Next one, please. Please, next. This was the, the Facebook map in terms of interconnectivity in 2012. Next one. This is it in 27, 2015. Next one. And this is it in 2017. Yeah? The amount of people that are currently connected to each other has grown from less than a billion to about three billion at the moment. And they expect that in the next five years, another five billion people will come on stream. And then you ask yourself, hey, how is that possible? For example, in Pakistan, we've got half of the population that's got difficulty in either affording or being able to, uh, to interact because language is an issue. But that's not longer necessary because I just press a button and I just have to speak. So everybody and anyone can interact with the internet over the next couple of years. And of course, this can be for the good that we just saw with Mustafa, or it could be for the bad in terms of hyper-empowered individuals that can develop anything in the dark, dark net. Next one, please. So as a result, we've got three of these tornadoes. Next one. Next one. There. We've got three of these tornadoes happening at the moment. And technology, if a technology develops in an exponential phase, in the beginning, you think it underwhelms until it hits an inflection point, and then it super excites. Yeah? And the ability of us to adopt to that situation, we talked about jobs, we talked about how to interact with it, goes in a much smaller space. And we're, very, we're already noticing through all kinds of social plans, whether it's America, whether it's the US, or the UK, that a lot of people actually comes back to tribalism. Yeah? They don't want to be globally connected anymore because they are afraid of what's happening. And not only on a government basis, but also on a business basis. As leaders, we've got a huge responsibility to actually do something to close and to help people adapt to those changes that are coming. Next one, please. So the future of work, next one. The future of work is going to be completely different. Whereas at the moment, yeah, we're all very comfortable on the left-hand side of this graph. But I promise you that the future is going to be much, much more with anything that's going to be on the right-hand side on the graph. Yeah? And if you are not building an organization that focuses on networks, empowering, constantly experiments, and is as transparent as they can be, you're going to be a dinosaur of the future. Next. So how do you manage talent in this exponential age? Next. But before I talk about talent, I just want to widen your horizon a little bit. Because when you think about talent, most of the time, you think about balance sheet talent. That's the person 
that's sitting on your, on your payroll in your company that's got a direct reporting line to somebody in your organization. I would like you to see talent in a very different perspective, yeah? where you can use talent from different partners that you have. Accounting firms are great examples of it. You can borrow talent from consulting firms or from any other partners that you have. You can look at freelance talent that work with you for three or four months and then move out. Or you can even completely open source talent. The moment that you start looking at the opportunity to build capabilities in your organization outside of your balance sheet, I think you're making the first step in managing talent in the exponential age. There are six other things that you need, have to, you need to be aware of. Next one, please. And I'm going to take you through these six slides very, very quickly. Next one. The first one is that each and every line manager has to be a talent scout at every possible opportunity. So this meeting today is not about you sharing your business cards. This meeting today is all around you trying to meet people that have got specific talents and that you remember for next time when you need to do specific projects. Next one, please. You also have to use, use talent in a much more different manner because millennials, people that come now out of LUMS, IBA, or any of the other universities, are not looking forward for a nine to five job in an accountant's firm. I think you'll find it very, very difficult to attract people. Yeah? People are much more interested to see themselves as a, I call it skillpreneur, somebody that wants to really improve his own skills and sometimes he does it in an accountant firm, sometimes he goes to a client, for the next six months he works for an NGO, and then he joins a startup. But it is all about building his own skills. Next. And of course, the second one, and as an HR professional, I love this one. The first thing that you need to do is to throw out the HR playbook. All of you have got these wonderful policies and procedures that is there and specifically intended to control 100% of the population. The problem is, 80% of the 90% of the population, you don't, they don't need that control. You can trust them that they do the right thing. You basically have this fat book with all the rules and policies to make sure that 10% of the people don't misuse the resources of the company. The problem, of course, is that if you, if you have this fat book and therefore harness these 90% and put them in a, in a corset, and those 10% you try to put them in a course, the 10% is much smarter than you are and is able to, to game the system anyway. So my advice in terms of your HR policies and procedures, next slide, is that you have a 10-word HR manual. Next, next, you. Act and decide as if this is your own company. There's one big but with this, which is the next, is that you have to hire rewards and tolerate only fully formed adults. Yeah? Because if this doesn't work, you, you can't give them the 10, 10 word policy manual. Next. The third one is that you have to treat talent as partners. That me doesn't mean that you as a boss treat your subordinates as a parent to child relationship, but you really have to start treating them as adults. And that requires a very different philosophy, not only from the line manager, who is an all around empowering the individual to take control of his own career, but specifically also of the individual, who suddenly can't blame a boss for all that is wrong with his career. Yeah? Next one, please. The fourth one, and Dr. Atarman mentioned this specifically for the youth, but I actually would like to really stress it for the audience that is here. And I call it the half-life of knowledge. Some of, the, uh, some of the physicists and chemists in this audience would know that the, high, high, the half-life of the molecule is all around the active, active value of a molecule and how long it will take for it to lose it. Well, the half-life of knowledge, when you, well, everybody that's old, as, as old as me and did his MBAs in the late 80s, early 90s, thought that I've done my MBA, I don't have to learn anymore, yeah? But I promise you that it's completely over. Half-life of knowledge is really, really, really shrinking. 
And in my particular view, I really think that as leaders, we really have to be able to actually replace at least 50% of whatever you know every three years. And I promise you, five years from now, that will be every 18 months. Because the top skills that, uh, that LinkedIn actually publish every year, that gets you hired across the world, I promise you, if I show you them, which is the next slide, is you and I haven't got a clue what this means. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe our CIOs knows half of this stuff, but even there, Tanvir, I don't think that you are very good at statistical analysis and data mining. Yeah, you've got your people to do that. Yeah? But these are the skills that are important for the future, that gets you hired on a platform like LinkedIn. So use the MOOCs that's been talked about. Go to Coursera, go to the Khan Academy, and sign up for the latest on artificial intelligence, data mining, data analytic, etc., etc. Next. The fifth one is the talent, and certainly the young talent coming into the workplace is certainly looking for meaning. Yeah? And I love that like, they, they want, the best talent is not there to make money, but to procure a life that they enjoy and which gives them a sense of meaning. And I know that I'm talking to accountants, and therefore I've got the last element that there has to be some money in it. But for most of the millennials, that's not going to be what drives them. Next. And it's all about, as an organization, is do you have a massive transformational purpose? Do you have something that you aim for that is auditiously big, aspirational, that can cause significant transformation, and as a result, explains why you come to the office every morning, or why you go to a coffee shop every morning to do the stuff that you're doing? And then you would say, Paul, but that's all well, the nice and, and, and nice, but Give me a net. <coughs> Sorry. So, because who doesn't want to be part of these organizations? <coughs> Next. <coughs> Next. <coughs> Can I have some water, please? Next. 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 Stop. Everybody would love these kind of purposes. Huh? I can't imagine that I would want to work for a company like Tesla. And then you say, Paul, Paul, how does it work in Pakistan? Yeah? And I really promise you that it does work. I've worked a lot of, a lot of time with uh, Telenor Microfinance Bank. And their purpose, next one, is to empower societies by banking the unbanked of the world. I promise you, as a consultant, I'm very excited to work with Telenor Bank. Because I know that I don't just do it for the income that I generate, I don't just do it for helping companies to transform, but at the end of the day, I help banking the unbanked of the world. And I think that's where talent is specifically looking for. So what is your organization's massive transformational purpose? Next one. The last one, of course, is technology. Yeah? And everybody that's born or that's younger than 30, is not interested in a lot of the physical stuff that you and I are still interested in. Everybody that's below 30 doesn't want to go to a bank to get money. Doesn't want to stand in a queue to do a number of services. Everything has to be done through mobile technology. Yeah? And that's where my new company is focused on, which is specifically around how do you acquire talent and we've developed a whole tool, and that's my next slide. We developed a whole tool around a gamified, gamified assessment platform that some, of, some companies in Pakistan are now using and that we're trying to roll out in the rest of the world. But these kind of ideas in which you use mobile technology to engage, to select, to attract, and at the end develop talent, is going to be the way forward. Next one. So these, oh, that was my last slide. So six things, talent, talent scout. The, sec, the second one was around uh, treat, uh, treat talent as a, par, as a partner, lifelong learning, uh, massive transformational purpose, and, uh, and, the, and the last one is around technology. If you touch on each of those six different elements, I promise you that you're able to create an employer brand and an organization 
that talent really wants to work for. Thank you very much.